Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Citizen Sleeper for the second time. Uh, we played this when it came out last year. Uh, and since then, as you can see in the update news box here, there has been new stuff added. There's a, the whole new set of plot lines in the Greenway that I'm very eager to check out. Also, I just want to try playing a different character through here. So we saw a lot of the game on the first attempt. I feel like I was as relatively thorough as I could be. Um, so there's definitely going to be a lot of retreaded uh, text and stuff here. If you want to watch me figure out the game, that other series is on the channel. Uh, there will be a link in the doobly-doo. Uh, this one we're going to be moving kind of quickly. I'm still going to read all the text, but we're going to be moving kind of quickly through the stuff we've seen before. Um, looking for that new stuff and places where we can make different decisions. In particular, I'm quite curious if we can maybe change one of the storylines. There might be some gentle spoilers here. If, you, if you're not familiar with the game already, it might be worth going and checking out that other series. Um, but without further ado, let's get going here. So you can see our, our previous game there. So we were the machinist last time. I remember the machinist uh, bad at directly engaging with people. Um, and we played a, a, a sort of a very sort of like physical repair, but also um, also like digital interface savvy character. Uh, so I'd like to do something a little bit different. Is there does one of these classes have a bonus to engage? No, not exactly. Uh, extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. This is definitely not the kind of thing we were doing with the last character. I feel like um, I feel like operators with like a bonus to interface and stuff. I feel like this is gonna gonna hum or gonna hew a little close to what we did last time. So let's try let's try being an extractor. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the story of the game, like I said, don't worry. We will be reading all of the text through. I don't know the game well enough uh, not to do that. <laughs> so the series will be, you know, functional, probably, if you've never uh, seen the game before, but. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting, minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Turn the game audio down just a tiny bit here. Okay. <clears throat> it's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Let's think of that body. Let's remember what our situation is here a little bit. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound. The friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach, until you can't tell one from the other. The cold slips in behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present cold, hard, at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. So, our last character was very, like, was very technical. I want this character to be more about people. Let's remember the others. You remember there were ten of you. Ten that could no longer stand the indentured work, the routines, the slow decay. Ten whose belief in their promised future was slowly dismantled day by day until they realized they had sold away everything that could and would ever matter. Ten that would escape or at least die trying. 
Some were lost in the shaft. Others never found the meeting point. Only a few even made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reached any destination. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, focus up. Try to rest here. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months? You're dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You've been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body has still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You've spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. And you feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too, everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then, light. White as the cold. Softer and softer, until in a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears, and you're out. It has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You're slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all thawed yet? Yeah, almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better perseverance than Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his headset with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. I don't love how its limbs really look like fingers. That's creepy. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. What happened to them? He ignores your question. I won't ask you what led. You, I won't ask what led you to it. I, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. You're just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. You nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms. The cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. But, as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these things aren't your memories. They're things that you know, but not things that you feel. You are no longer that person. You're an offshoot, a copy. What you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours has fallen apart. And it's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. S and Arp wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well, then no one can. You remember that, too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them, and the body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? 
But for now, sleeper, you're one of the lucky ones. Draco's glance is up and away toward the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been, we haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you're welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. All right, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma, flash uh, plasma flashes, silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. So yeah, you know, cyberpunk. An adventure in space within the nightmare of late-stage capitalism. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest, which will move time forward on the station. Let's head to that empty container and end the cycle now. Alright, so you can see here, every time we, uh, every time we rest, we lose two energy and one condition. Uh, you'll see what that means in a moment. We don't have access to our full UI yet. You wake, curled up in the corner of the container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Well, I mean, our last character was very focused on continuing to flee. I think this character, you know, like, this character needs people. We need to, we need to build a life. We need to find something to be for. Maybe you did get lucky finding yourself here. Maybe here on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. Is that sachets, probably? Of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns, burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you've finished drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. So up here we have a condition monitor. That's this bit. Uh, our action dice and our energy. Condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle because our body has been designed to fall apart, if not continually given the chemicals that the, uh, the company produces, kind of like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, the, uh, the novel. I don't think that was really in the movie. Um, if your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. That seems bad. I don't think I, I didn't see that in the first playthrough and I don't intend to see it this time. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to the corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. At the start of each cycle, we roll our action dice. They'll be used to perform actions. The number of dice rolled is based on our condition. So you can see the, the way the condition bar lays across here. Uh, you get to roll any die that has at least one condition bar, like within its uh, vertical space. So if we want to be rolling all five dice, we gotta get our, get, got to get our condition back up to here somehow. Uh, once you've used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must rest to recover them, which ends the current cycle. 
you also need to eat to survive. This is represented by this five section energy bar. You can refill your energy bar by eating, but first, you know, you gotta find somewhere to get food. Uh, energy depletes by two segments per cycle. If it becomes empty, you'll be starving. If you're starving, energy loss becomes condition loss and your condition will deplete at double rate. So very important not to starve. Dragos is standing in the, cor uh, the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the corridor, you realize it's implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, I'm okay. I don't want to burden anybody else. The drone, the drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You well enough to work? Yeah, I'm well enough to work. All right, then, he nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here. But I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Yeah, okay, fair enough. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. And sleepers, well, he trails off. But things being the way they are for me at the yard, he pauses. I need the help. Well, I'm happy to help. Okay, he pauses, thinking of something else to add. Well, look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Yeah, will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work, so let's talk about actions and stuff. Get the rest of our tutorial here. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. So we're going to find the locations on the ship that have these actions available. They have a slot where you can put a die in. Uh, you use your action dice in the slots. And actions will reward you with clock prog progress, energy, conditions, or items, depending on their outcome. Uh, there are three types of outcome, positive, neutral, and negative. And your action dice produce those outcomes according to the number on the die. So you put a six in a thing, you will always succeed. Put a five, 50% chance of a positive, 50% chance of a neutral, and so on. Uh, the skill attached to the uh, slot will modify things. So, you know, uh, anything that we have, any endure actions, we can put a five in and it will be treated as a six because of our, our particular skills. Actions display information about their type, risk level, and the skill and modifiers that apply to that action. Actions are either critical or repeatable. Critical actions can only be performed once, so, you know, put a high die in there, make sure you get it. Uh, the risk level is either safe, risky, or danger. On a safe, even a failure doesn't actually lose you anything meaningful. On a risky thing, a negative outcome means you will lose some cryo or energy. In a danger level action, a negative outcome means you will lose some condition, and a neutral outcome means cryo or energy loss, probably. Uh, and like I said, yeah, they'll be affected by your skills. So we just have to be a little bit careful here. This endure action is safe and also um, it's the thing we're best at. So we can, we can go in for some hull dissection here. Even the rustiest hull can provide, uh, can hide valuable components and materials, but extracting them means cutting carefully and skillfully and knowing what the hell you're cutting away, right? Uh, so anytime we succeed at any of this stuff, it'll feed progress into this back in business clock. Uh, every salvager knows they're always just one lucky haul away from their next payday. We can also do manual salvage, which is basically just going through the big pile of stuff that's been cut away already. It's going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the Towers of Salvage, but you're no stranger to hard labor. Uh, I don't really love 
fours on hull dissection, so let's just, let's commit ourselves heavily to manual salvage here. That reads as a five due to our plus one. And we got the neutral outcome. Actions often fill progress clocks. Uh, clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them, and they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something will happen. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Dragos' debt, are cycle clocks. These just tick forward once each cycle uh, and will complete without you, so, you know, don't, don't just ignore them. Uh, active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location, whereas these other ones are obviously filled by our actions. So, one point of back in business and also 10 cryo, which is the currency of this place. Cryptocurrency stored in airwalled sticks of memory known as chits. It's all very Shadowrun. Uh, let's try again. Let's hit that positive, shall we? Oh, also, we have drives and navigation up here. Uh, so, in Citizen Sleeper, you will unlock drives as you will discover more about yourself and the world. Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives. These are quests. You know how this works. Uh, you can track drives. Yeah, video game stuff. Uh, you're now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Uh, yeah, I know how to play the game already, so we're gonna... I will help to guide us through here. Bummer, we got the neutral again. Well, I mean, it's working. It's working slowly, but it's working. Probably gonna see some more neutrals here. Oof. One second. Sorry, had a little tickle in my throat that had to be dealt with there. Alright, show me one positive outcome for the day. Just one. Okay, no such luck. On a negative outcome, we make no progress toward back in business which is a real shame, but we still make a little bit of money at least. So we're out of action dice for the day. All we can really do now is go to sleep. But as you will remember, when we go to sleep, we're gonna burn the rest of our energy. So it's probably time to start thinking about where we might find some food. Let's just look around the station a little bit. So here at dock C4, merchants will show up periodically, just over time, just check back in later. Uh, over here at Dock B2, we have kind of a similar situation. Uh, it takes several cycles to reach the Starward Belt and return, loaded with scrap from old wrecks. Ships will do that. We can come over here and help them salvage as well when they get in. And here in the Rotunda, the old dock terminal, perhaps we can... Uh... Nope, it looks like just actions. <laughs> so we can try, just once, to steal some dock plans. Uh, Havenage Security has to have plans and stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place. And of course, the most dangerous. Uh, or we could just explore the rotunda the old fashioned way, just kind of like wander around and see what's what. Not really a thing our character is great at. Our character does not intuit very well. Um, I think I think we're kind of sort of, we're kind of a relationship based and very head down. Our character is not an explorer by nature. We're given a specific job, we sort of nose to the grindstone and get that done. Um, so on these, you have a positive clock, which means you've gotten to know the rotunda better, and a negative clock that tracks failures um, that represents getting on the bad side of the security teams in the area. So we'll just have to be careful about that. Uh, there's more stuff up the wheel here a little bit. The bright market. Uh, we can come ask for directions. Why wander when there are hundreds of people that live and work? We could just ask somebody for assistance. It'll earn us a little bit of local knowledge. Uh, also, we can just kind of explore and look around ourselves. Again, not really our character sort of deal. We are an ask for directions kind of character. And here we have the gate into the low end. After some spacers cause trouble in the low end, Yatagan have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying 60 cryo which is considerably more than we earn in a day. So we'll, uh, we'll come back and think about it later. There's also down here, the Havenage Construction Yards, where we could come and do some work. Certainly there's heavy garbage that needs to get moved around. 
we don't have connections. We do have raw, raw shipbuilding skills, but I think we're more of a material hauler, probably. And the only way to get to know this area is to work. The tourists are not allowed. No looking loose. Well, let's take a little rest here. Uh, now, because we have Endure, let's go to our character sheet. How do I access the character sheet? Here we go. Okay, so we have five basic skills. We started the game with one of our skills upgraded up to the plus one point, and one of our skills down at the, uh, at the negative one point. Uh, as we gain skill points, as we gain upgrade points, we can learn uh, new, new perks and gain uh, skill modifiers and stuff. Because we have so much endurability, uh, we are allowed to recover energy at home. Which means we don't technically need to eat. We can just photosynthesize. My guess is this is going to turn out to be very inefficient. But we don't actually know exactly how much um, energy you get from this. Your frame's photosynthetic skin allows you to gather energy through sunlight. But the longer you stay, the better. Alright. For right now, we're just going to end this cycle because we're out of dice. But let's try photosynthesis a little bit and see how effective it is. This time, you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring, surrounds you. For a moment, you're gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then, the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange, and then extensions, as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to. You see the station. No, you feel the station. Like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Uh, yeah, we're just kind of like... We are not a sit-back-and-observe kind of person. We reach out to touch it. You find a point in the station, and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers, and then you try, in a moment of impulsiveness, to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them, too. But you notice a tugging feeling, pulling at you, insistent as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down, and all of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours, all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second, and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored, and then it is gone. All right, uh, so we don't have great dice here, obviously. I'm going to throw a five on this, because that'll guarantee the most positive outcome. I'm just curious, what, how, how much energy exactly do we get by sunbathing in the best case scenario? Okay, three points. So actually, I can tell you right now, that's better than most food. That's actually pretty efficient. I'm assuming lower levels of success, like neutral probably is two bars and failure is probably one, because this is a safe action. So remember, even failure is still kind of positive. It's like gently positive. All right, let's help Dragos out a little bit more. I do feel like we gotta we gotta take care of him. He's the closest thing we have to family out here. Uh, we could do a little bit of hull dice section since we have a, di a die that is guaranteed to succeed on it. We don't have to worry about the risk so much. Okay, two ticks of back in business and a little bit more money. Uh, we're gonna take the two over to here though. Our plus one makes it possible to succeed at least okay we get our neutral and that's 60 credits right there and since we don't have to pay for food i'm inclined to just buy access to the, to the low end 
The bright mark is glowing yellow like we have some kind of new option here, but I don't think it's actually true. Alright, you hand over the chits to the Yatagan Enforcer and he nods you through. So, what do we find here in the low end? A ramshackle residential district. Uh, so this area, no one knows you here. You'll need to change that if you want access to the, to the low end's residents and facilities. So we can just wander around and do, uh, do building superintendent work, basically. Uh, or we can play this game Tavla with the locals. The click of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end as residents play rotating rounds of this game for cryo. Uh, again, it doesn't really seem like the sort of thing we'd be good at. The engineering work is certainly on the table, though. And here we have the free spoke. Uh, the spoke is layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. So we can just... Uh, we can climb around inside the service passages and makeshift tunnels. Again, an exploratory action, not really the sort of thing we're good at. Or we can just climb around the outside of it, which is certainly, I mean, it's going to be easier to maintain your orientation that way. Uh, that is an action we're a little bit better at. But obviously, we don't really have the, op the option of doing any of this for now. So we're going to have to find a doctor, and we're going to have to find a doctor pretty soon. It might be worth actually trying to meet some people. For the moment, I do want to take care of Dragos, though as he has been taking care of us. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights, like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer and crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads, you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms, then leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to try to, par er, to parse, but you begin to try. Uh, let's focus on the nodes. What do these represent? The nodes are glassy, bright, but in all this flow, the only solid and fixed points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle? Dimensions are difficult here, and lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse any further, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. The threads and nodes passages and puzzle boxes. One leads to another. There's so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then that insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions as if they were tied around you. Well, arbitrarily, let's pay attention to the first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. And the second? The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something. A sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, tasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. Okay, so we're perceiving threats here in perhaps a slightly abstract way. Alright, I would love to see another positive result here. Oh. Tutorial, the cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. 
While there, you can use dice and items to access systems and extract data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. Click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle that view. Well, first I will rest. Okay, neutral outcome plus two energy like I thought. So if we click this, we can see sort of like a representation of all the data points. This stuff is cool, but I think we're a little busy. So, we have here a six. I think I'm gonna use our absolute safety six to steal the plans to the docking area so that we can map them and make some sense of it. All right, that completely fills the dock watcher clock. And it has revealed a bunch of locations. First things first, let's meet Ankita, the stranded mercenary. Hey you, you wanna earn a chit? Ankita stands beside a huge pile of tied together hull plates. She stretches out her back, her shoulders bulging beneath her flight suit. Uh, yeah, I think like, again, sort of a head down worker sort. Yeah, sure, I'll work. You cross the docking concourse as she begins to split the plating into two bundles. What is it with this place, she asks, as she lashes the massive plates together. Everyone wants their cut. She straightens up to an imposing height, her armor plates creaking, and looks you up and down. Hey, don't try anything, all right? She taps the butt of her sidearm. I don't want to have to put down anyone else today. Uh, no, sure, wouldn't think of it. Good. She pauses. Look, I'm not usually... Let's just say my temper's been a little short lately. Ankita hoists one bundle of plating onto her shoulder. All right, come on then, enough chat. You gotta earn that chit. You struggle to shoulder the plates, but you do eventually. Ankita gives you a look. All right, ships this way. And she sets off down a gantry at impressive speed. As you catch up to her, she turns down a passage, pushing through a small crowd of stevedores. So, why are you doing this yourself? You mean, why aren't I hiring those good folk? She nods back at the stevedores. Listen, I've paid ha Havenage enough. They're currently rinsing me for a mooring I can't vacate unless I either fix the ambergris or sell it off as scrap. The ambergris? Is that your ship? You catch on fast. She gives you another of her looks. She rapidly turns another corner as you trail behind. She got cut up pretty bad on our last job. I had to moor up here for a spell. But since then, it's only gotten worse. Someone got in and sliced the core from our ship mind. So now she's gone dark. She shifts the panels on her shoulder. The upshot is that I'm short one ship mind with a ton of repairs to do, and the rest of the crew signed off the moment they got wind I'd been stranded. So yeah, it's been a time. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear it. Yeah, I've seen worse, but I'm bleeding chits every cycle here, so I need to get off and fast. Ankita swings the plates from her back, almost knocking you over in the process. All right, this is me. She hauls the second bundle off your shoulder. You know, you're the first person I met here who might actually be considered helpful. She pauses, chewing her bottom lip. All right, look, you want to help? Come see me. I need a hand putting Amber back together, and you don't seem like the type to try anything stupid. She passes the bundles of plates through the Ambergris's outer lock and then turns back. Just don't go spreading all this around. Ankita throws you a couple of chits. Consider it a bonus for not trying to grift me. She gives you a parting nod and ducks through the doorway. Alright, get out of here, she calls back, and the lock slams shut. Wow, that really was a couple of chits. Uh, so, we got a new drive now. We can help fix the Ambergris. My primary concern is survival, but repaying Dragos also, I think, matters quite a lot. Speaking of which... No, wait. This is, sorry, this is sleep. This is the yard. Let's just throw in a little bit more manual salvage time. Positive result? Nope. Neutral's all the way to the top. That's fine, I guess. So, we have a couple more cycles of three dice, but we're getting, uh, we're getting low a little faster than I would like. 
Oof. That is a rough setup. So remember, uh, the three and the four have the same success chances. So I'm going to take this two, treat it as a three, and try to sunbathe up enough action to, uh, enough energy to hopefully not have to rest again tomorrow. No such luck. As you close up the container, a voice echoes down the corridor toward you. Sleeper, wait up. Uh, I will turn and meet this person. Fang is coming down the corridor toward you, a wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around, just want to chat. Are you staying in that thing? He nods back to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. Now, what was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? It's a nice idea, but, you know, not always very practical. He glances back at you. Now, we do our best, but it isn't easy. Uh, we? Who's we? You pass together into the main walkway. Havenage. Now we're all one dysfunctional family. Fang puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't, don't worry. I'm with systems. I think our, I, I think the version of this character we're playing has a tendency to focus on, like, the immediately available people. Systems? Well, everything the eye runs on. He runs a hand along the passage wall. This place is a ruin, but systems keeps it spinning somehow. At least we try to. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. I saw you around and, well, I know a little about you sleepers. Uh, I have a little proposition for you. He glances around, but um, this is probably not the place for it. Uh, look, I have an office just across the way. You can give me a cycle or two to prepare and then when you're settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, yep, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back, his voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. All right, stay clean, sweeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. Okay, well, that's another problem potentially to resolve. So we can go down the ambergris and work here. Uh, we are not allowed to help Ankita rewire her drones because that requires plus one interface, which we extremely do not have. Uh, but we could do some risky hull repairs here. Maybe on a day when our dice are slightly better. Let's go ahead and knock this out. We can complete this uh, clock at least, probably. Alright. There we go. You arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in the twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. Ah, she's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focused on the hulking ship as it is lowered into the yard. Uh, yeah, she is. I should thank you. This place was on, it la on its last legs when you turned up. And now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Dragos for this monstrous craft, uh, but you can't help but think of what became of its crew. So what happened to it? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit. That's what happened. No, I mean, what happened to the ship, though? Uh, not my concern. He shrugs. The ship creaks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I am going to need some help with this one. The drones start to crawl over the hulk, their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion. Locked inside that container, the wreck of the Essen Arp freighter lowered into the yard like a corpse, ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own, a womb for your rebirth into this strange station? 
You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Drago squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we're up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emblazoned on its side. Winter Light. Yeah, man, let's do it. He claps you on the back. Uh, glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting, and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Okay, so every time you complete a drive, you get an upgrade point. Uh, access the character menu here to do that thing. So, with our upgrade point, we can uh, take any, we can take any objective or any any movement that is within the bounds of like this column. So we can take something where we already have the perk up to a plus one, or take something where we have the zero up to the perk. Uh, we do a fair amount of engineer actions, or at least we have the opportunity to. So this might not be terrible, but also any engage action has a chance to give you energy is kind of neat. Let's take this. Maybe, maybe we will simply never have to worry about food. That would be cool. Uh, and then, so Dragos has another thing he wants done. I gotta find a doctor, though. Let's, uh, let's start working on the low end. So, obviously, uh, the, to the risky tavla is not exactly our sort of thing. I think I'd rather try to do maintenance for people. Get maybe a little bit paid, but definitely a little bit of, uh familiarity. You join a group of residents trying to repair the tangled in innards of an elevator motor and manage to spot the problem. A burnt out resistor. Hey, we did it. We helped a little bit. Once again, things would be a lot easier with some positive outcomes. We're not getting so lucky on these fours. Things are getting a little bit grim. I'm worried. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Uh, okay, so we can go see Fang. That might wait a second, though. Uh, my intention with this series is to provide approximately an hour of gameplay every episode. But I am just the tiniest bit crunched for time right now, so I think I'm going to call this one here at the beginning of this cycle. Uh, this is Citizen Sleeper. We have the very basics of the mechanics down now. Obviously, the story is a very significant focus here, and we're heading into, like, the real plot next time. So, come back for that, and we'll see you then.